If you're looking for the best possible battery runtime in a 15 to 16 inch Windows based laptop, the new MSI Prestige 16 with its Intel Core Ultra 9 285H Arrow Lake CPU might be a good choice. I can't say that for sure, but I think it might be a contender for the world record in battery runtime on idle for a Windows laptop. Since in my test with 20% display brightness, activated Wi-Fi and a dark wallpaper, it actually managed, and I kid you not, 36 hours for the total battery runtime. You could fly from London to New York, meet a friend, have dinner, sleep and fly back the next morning and it would probably still be running when you return. I know that recent MacBooks can reach these runtimes with even smaller batteries, but for a Windows machine that is absolutely outstanding. But of course, this is under extreme conditions if you really don't actually use it. That is because the Intel Core Ultra 9 285H Arrow Lake CPU can be super efficient on low CPU loads thanks to its now properly working two LP cores, resulting in an average power draw of only 2.7 watt for the whole system. CPU, RAM, screen, Wi-Fi, motherboard, everything. And well, the battery is really huge in here with its 99 watt hours. My YouTube test at 50% brightness with 20% loudness using headphones also was super impressive with 14.75 hours. Now, again, I don't have the data of all available laptops out there, but I've never seen such numbers before and I was not able to find anything better in a first research. A quick correction while I'm actually editing the video. I did find a Snapdragon based laptop, the Dell XPS 13, with a better runtime of an insane 46 hours with a 55 watt hour battery. But I guess for x86 CPU based Windows laptops by Intel or AMD, it's still a record. And even gaming at full power resulted in two hours and 40 minutes which is really neat considering we are at the same performance level of modern gaming handhelds here. But before we go on with the rest of the laptop, let's see who is the sponsor of today's video. Well, it's see who. You know, sitting all day really messes with your body if you're not having a good chair and stand up once in a while. Maybe not when you're 22, but the day will come for sure. I can promise you that. And many users out there think their gaming chairs have them covered, but they really don't. That's why today we're talking about the Sihu Doro C300. Extremely ergonomic, affordable and looking really cool at the same time. Available in black or white. This chair is what I'd call the grown-up upgrade. It doesn't scream, I'm a gaming chair. It looks clean, modern and actually also fits into a nice workspace or studio. No RGB, no racing stripes, just smart design and really good ergonomics and high quality. And that's what matters. The Sihu Doro C300 has a self-adaptive lumbar support that moves with you ensuring your back is supported all the time. A breathable mesh backrest so you don't end up sitting in your own sweat like in these fat gaming chairs. And it even has fully adjustable 4D armrests that you can move up and down, forward and backwards or turn them inside for more comfort. While the 3D headrest can perfectly adapt to your size to comfortably lean back while it's just giving your neck the exact amount of support it needs. It's basically the opposite of these bulky gaming chairs that pretend to be ergonomic just because they're big and look like racing chairs. Whether you're gaming or watching a movie, browsing the web, it has you covered with the right position. And even Forbes praised this, an affordable alternative to the Herman Miller Aaron. CEO caliber comfort at a price hard to resist. So if you want real comfort without the pretentious racing chair wipe, the Sihu Doro C300 honestly is a slick, breathable and ergonomic upgrade. Highly recommend it. Your back will definitely thank you and your setup might just look better as well. If you'd like to check out the Sihu Doro C300, I'll drop a link below. And yeah, there's even a little discount in it for you. Use my code for 6% off when checking out. And thanks a lot to Sihu for sponsoring this video. Now, but is the all new MSI Prestige 16 any good besides the amazing battery runtimes? Let's have a quick look at the specs first. As mentioned, the MSI Prestige 16 comes with the 16 core CPU Intel Core Ultra 9 285H with 6 performance cores, 8 E cores and the two mentioned LP cores. 32 GB of soldered DDR5 RAM with around 7500 mega transfers per second. A pretty fast 1TB NVMe and a second M.2 slot is available. A 16 inch 1600p screen, Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, a 99 watt hour battery and a 100 watt charger. 
The slim full aluminium body here weighs a total of only 1.6 kg and offers a pretty good build quality. The hinge makes a really good impression and one hand opening is super easy. The keyboard here feels pretty good riding on it. It is illuminated in a very bright white and offers a full numpad as well. And it also has a fingerprint sensor integrated in the power button. The touchpad is huge and it feels really good using it and sleek and everything, but for my taste it's definitely too far to the left and I actually sometimes executed right clicks when I wanted a left click. It kind of takes some time to get used to it, I guess. Now, the 16 inch 2560 by 1600 pixel 16 to 10 IPS screen is good, but it's not perfect. It only offers 60 Hz, but the maximum brightness is pretty neat. I've measured around 460 nits and a pretty good color accuracy. 85% for Adobe RGB, 100% for sRGB and 95% for the P3 color space. And I have to point out that the 16 inch 16 to 10 screen really feels quite big. The speakers are kind of mediocre. The loudness could be louder, missing some bass as with most middle class laptops, but they are okay. I personally think the port situation here is okay-ish since we're getting two USB-C 4.0 Thunderbolt ports and a USB 3.2A port with 10, gigabytes, uh, 10 gigabits and an HDMI port at the back while we need one of the USB-C ports for actually charging the laptop. But they actually allow to use a neat GPU and if you're using a dock with power delivery it's working fine. And on the right side, it actually has a real gigabit LAN port, which is not that often the case with these thinner laptops. A 3.5 mm audio jack and it also has an SD card slot. P.S. This is what the integrated 1080p camera looks like and this is what the microphone sounds like and this is what it sounds like when I'm typing on the keyboard while recording. Oh, and it also has Windows login via the webcam or a small webcam at the side next to it. Now one big problem of the MSI Prestige 16 seems to be the cooling system. Previous reviews have criticized the fact that it has only one fan and it runs really hot resulting in thermal throttling like immediately after you start a heavy task. And that is true, the performance constantly drops in each Cinebench run I did. Though with the beefiest laptop cooler that I have, the temperatures are becoming great actually, but the performance still drops, not as much as before, but it does. And that is because the 55 watt power limit in here, the Intel Arrow Lake CPU is allowed in the MSI Presti Prestige 16 in the long run. It could also be related to the fact that the USB-C charger here, this is a small one, only delivers 100 watt, which is less than what the system needs under its maximum load when the CPU is shortly boosting to around 75 watt or even more in the beginning. I scored up to 20,994 points in the Cinebench R23 multi-core test and a very high 2,210 for the single core score. While after 10 minutes, the multi-core dropped to 18,555 points without the external cooler, meaning it's around 13% more in the first run. But even with the perfect temperatures with the cooler, uh, the performance is only slightly better. I mean, to be honest, it's not optimal, but will you notice that when actually working with the laptop performance-wise? No, you probably won't. A 3-4% to difference in performance is not noticeable. And is the laptop fast enough for office work, content creation and light gaming? Yes, absolutely. It's a really snappy system, it has many cores, you'll be fine for anything except for higher end gaming and maybe very complex video editing and 3D rendering of course. But other than that, it's perfectly fine as an everyday laptop for anyone with the need for a strong ultrabook really. Booting and waking up are super fast as well. But a big problem, which is caused by all of that, is the fact that the chassis is getting really warm at the bottom and when I was actually gaming, I've noticed that the small gap between the touchpad and the keyboard does get quite hot, which is suboptimal as that is where I rest my thumb when using the WASD keys for walking. Also on full speed, the fan is quite loud if you activate the fan boost. And if you're, for example, gaming on the balanced mode, it's already much quieter, while I did notice some higher pitched sound coming from the fan. And it's barely hearable using the eco silent mode, though two fans might have actually helped here as well. But even lighter gaming is even possible with said eco silent mode. 
and that way it actually does get super quiet but for some reason the fan won't turn off completely all the time even on battery and even if it only uses the 2.7 watt I've mentioned on idle. But when streaming longer 4K videos it stays basically unhearable nevertheless. The PC Mark 10 performance is pretty good with a maximum of 7924 points in performance mode meaning it's going to do a great job in everyday tasks and while working with it. Perfect for office work, coding, you name it. Gaming is possible to some extent considering it's sporting the new Intel Arc Graphics 140T which is in fact just very similar to the 140 Wii and therefore amongst the fastest integrated graphics around in the ballpark and pretty close to the Radeon 890M while in some games it might even be a bit faster. Check out my video where I compare these two afterwards. One thing I've noticed is that for gaming the MSI Prestige actually doesn't make full use of the 55 watt TDP for the PL1 meaning I guess the GPU is capped at maybe 20 to 30 watt and the rest is for the CPU which isn't fully utilized in most gaming scenarios. All tested games for today have been tested at the MSI Prestige's highest performance mode with a fan set to its maximum speed. However, as Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is so well optimized and forgiving even on weaker and older hardware, I actually got decent graphics at 1200p with medium settings and FSR on performance with an average FPS of around 42 and good 1% lows of 32. And the game does look really good even on the bigger 16 inch screen and despite running FSR in performance. I mean it's not as sharp as with the native 1600p but that would just be too much for this integrated GPU to handle with more than like 20 FPS or so. I tested Hogwarts Legacy at 1600p with FSR on ultra performance because otherwise it's a bit nasty to record the gameplay due to issues with the full screen mode. The game does look noticeably blurry that way but with medium settings the overall experience was alright and I saw an average of 39 FPS with 1% lows of 26 which isn't that bad actually running through the town of Hogsmeade, flying around a bit and taking a stroll through the castle as well. I mean if you're not too picky about high-end graphics you could definitely do some lighter AAA gaming on this thin and light despite it not having a dedicated GPU. Considering the frame times the MSI Prestige 16 is doing pretty good here but as you can see it actually uses a total of 26GB of RAM so the big 32GB of RAM here really do help. For CS2 I've set the resolution to 1200p and used FSR on balanced mode in combination with the low settings preset. That resulted in an average of 113 FPS and 1% lows of 65 and it is of course playable even if it's not on a professional level for sure. But with its slower 60Hz screen it's probably not meant for high paced FPS gaming anyhow. In Forza Horizon 5 I was using high settings with FSR on balance at 1200p which resulted in a reasonable image quality and a pretty stable 60fps on average with 1% lows of 53 and it's definitely enjoyable that way in my opinion. Keep in mind that Intel GPUs aren't exactly shining in this game but it's actually playable anyhow if you're okay with a fixed and pretty stable 60fps on average. So as a conclusion I'd say the MSI Prestige 16 is a great laptop for students, coders or people that really need an unprecedented battery life as you'll have a hard time finding laptops that will last longer than this one. Build quality, peripherals and almost everything else is pretty solid as well and the laptop does feel valuable for sure. You just have to be aware of the heating issues and the single fan cooling system though. But everyday performance is great and it's really snappy with that fast SSD, fast enough for 4K video editing, picture editing, some basic 3D stuff and even AAA gaming if you're okay with turning down the graphics for a better performance. But thanks to its 16 cores and 32GB of RAM you're really getting a lot of performance. Now the only 60Hz of the screen and the soldered RAM surely might be considered as flaws as well of course. When this video was recorded I had no information about the price it will have but I'll try to provide that in the comments once available. And that's all for today. If you like the content consider liking or even subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Also thanks again for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to watch my 890M and 140B comparison next. Bye bye and cheers.